Yeah, I was in Alabama. They took me to a shooting range, and I was hitting all the targets. And they're like, "Dude, we always thought you were a spy. You just, <laughs> you just proved it." I'm fully American. I still feel like I get seen as like a .25 immigrant, a little immigrant. I'm limigrant. I'm a limited immigrant. <laughs> limigrant. In the past years, there has been a lot of anti-Asian rhetoric, especially in the media concerning the politics. However, there's also been an uptick and a rise of positive Asian representation in entertainment. So I guess the question is. Are things getting better or worse for Asians in America? And I'm here with Chinese-born stand-up comedian Peng to talk about it. Uh, like for example, uh, we are the people that invented gunpowder. And the rest of the world's like, what are you gonna do next? You gonna invent guns? Like, nah, it's firework, it's party time, baby. <laughs> like you didn't invent guns, you just invented a different angle. <laughs> right? like, Fourth of July, rest of the year. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes, uh, this is Peng, coming straight from the motherland. Just got off of a giant Chinese balloon, and uh, it's Peng actually, not, not Ping. It's it's the Mandarin accent. You're you're speaking from a Cantonese accent. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for assuming that I can speak Cantonese. <laughs> I'm just an ABC. Uh, but yeah, there's this uh, viral CNN article. Uh, going around right now called Asian Americans are anxious about hate crimes and mm. the TikTok ban rhetoric isn't helping. Guys, we're going to have a productive and hopefully funny conversation about this um, because there is a mixture of feelings. Things are getting worse and things are getting better in a way. Asians are at the Oscars, but then China's the enemy in the media. So I guess we got to talk about it. Uh, if you're interested by this conversation, please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. Um, so I guess... Uh, Pung, on the negative side, this is a lot of the things that are making a lot of mm. Asian Americans, and particularly Chinese Americans or Chinese in America, feel bad. Trade wars, spy balloon, accusing TikTok of being a communist spy app, pandemic xenophobia, anti-Asian hate crimes, accusing Chinese students and professors of espionage, well-established Asian American politicians being questioned for their loyalty, tensions over Taiwan are heating up, and some states are banning Chinese nationals from buying any property. Uh, over in Texas, you were doing comedy in Texas for many years, <laughs> yes. so you're familiar with this. And this article was even centered around a Korean woman from Pennsylvania, what? not even a Chinese not person. Not even Chinese. So it is affecting everybody. <laughs> Um, and those like, like, what are your, uh, like, understandably, these mm. things would make a Chinese person feel bad in America, right? It, you could easily feel bad, right? Yes. I mean, I came here 12 years ago. I went to college in Alabama, uh, which interestingly enough, there's a lot of Korean people live in that town working for the Hyundai plan. And, uh, I got pulled over by police once and, um, he was like, yo, you, do you almost hit me? Are you drunk? I'm like, no. Are you Korean? I'm like, no, I'm Chinese. And yeah, you're good to go. He just let me. He just let me off because I'm not Korean. Like, isn't that interesting? Like, 12 years ago, being Chinese helped me getting out of the situation. <laughs> so, you, so, but you were just driving poorly. Yeah, like you were a drunk Korean would, that was working at the Hyundai plant. Right. <laughs> yeah, in that town, Koreans had a bad reputation for drunken driving. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I guess what you're saying is you feel for this. Uh, this Korean woman in this article from Pennsylvania where it's like she's Korean she's getting kind of feeling the heat of being Chinese even though she's yeah. not being Chinese okay right right I feel bad for her <laughs> yeah I guess so so with the bad things there yeah. are bad things that we can all feel because mm. we keep tapped in with the news and everything like that however I also keep I stay up with entertainment mm -hmm. and obviously Chinese took over the Oscars everything everywhere all at once yes. there's more Mandarin and Chinese and Asian themed shows in movies, whether they're Korean or Chinese, and even some more Vietnamese-based movies coming up right now. Obviously, there's like American-born Chinese. There's everything everywhere all at once. Shang-Chi, Beef is Korean. Yes. Parasite won awards. Everything. So there's just like, I guess, from a media standpoint, it's better. It is better. So it's both good and bad. So I guess like, who is it worse for and who is it better for? Um, it's obviously bad for Asian Americans, and by Asian American, I mean anybody that looks like Chinese, right? right. Anybody that can pass as Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sorry, like, if you're Japanese, yeah, Korean, Japanese, Korean, if you're even of the Ch Chinese Southeast Asian diaspora, yeah. If, if you if you're part Chinese, you look Chinese, you're you're probably gonna feel some level of it. I would say it's definitely worse for the average Asian in like a town or an environment where the general population is not very educated. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, you know, like, like 
rural parts of Pennsylvania or maybe the <laughs> South. I mean, you lived in the South for many years from Alabama to Texas. Yeah. So you got some insight on this. But like, I would also say Chinese grad students who are trying to like be chemical engineers, <laughs> like maybe they're getting looked at with a more like suspicious eye because like, you know, people might think they're <laughs> they're spies and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, I guess I people... I, I, Thinks um people think I'm a spy all the time. Like I, uh, I'm not even like mechanical engineer. I, I went to business school. People think I was spy. Like yeah. when you were getting your MBA, you're saying some people were kind of like, "Hey, punk, why are you trying to learn a master's of business? What type of business you master? Trying to bring our our secret business tactics back to the motherland." <laughs> yeah, Dell. I was in Alabama. They took me to a shooting range, and I was hitting all the targets. And they're like, dude, we always thought you were a spy. You just, <laughs> you just proved it. You just proved it. <laughs> hey, you're a bad driver, but a good shooter. <laughs> yeah. Kind of sus. No. Um, and I think that, yeah, I mean, dude, that's pretty funny. And I mean, you're a grad student, but it's like, it's like, would really a Chinese spy go to get an MBA, right? I don't know. And being a stand-up comedian. What would a, ch <laughs> what kind of intel would a ch in Chinese stand-up comedian get? <laughs> like. What do you do, sir? Are you guys together? You, you <laughs> what do you do for a living? Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reporting back to China. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of insight on uh, American humor um, data. I'm uh, collecting the data so we can <laughs> start a new app. I don't know. But anyways, I guess like who is it better for, I guess? And what is the opportunity here? Mm. Because I'm trying to look at the bright side. Yes. And, you know, we're both in media. We're part of Asian representation in media. Being You're being a stand-up comedian. You've done some commercial gigs. Yes. Um, obviously, I've been on YouTube and, and done some uh, small little acting gigs as well. So we're part of this Asian media representation. But, um, yeah, I guess how would you describe the opportunity here? Um, I would compare it to, like... Uh, the, the brown comedians, Muslim comedians uh, from like post 9-11, like uh, Russell Peters, Mastro Brownie, um, even uh, Hassan, Minaj. Hassan Minaj. Yes. Yeah. Because they, they were going through tough times. Brown people, Muslims going through tough time in America. And at the same time, these comedians were able to uh, take on the, the tough subject and make it funny mm. and make it relatable to, to yeah. the rest of the country. That's Be why they were successful. Because it kind of feels like that there's uh, an influx of attention on this topic. So yes. anybody who can talk about it from a, uh, an expert point of view or an experienced point of view, right. right? And make people feel better about it maybe and have a sense of humor about it. It's very yeah. interesting, right? Yeah. So like, although... You know, unfortunately, there was like even some Punjabi Sikhs that were getting attacked after 9-11, whom they're not obviously have nothing to do with even the same religion. But I guess like um, there was a lot of humor that came out of the tragedy. Exactly. Right? And, and I guess comedy is often coming from tragedy, right? Once you have time to cope with it, you can right. accept it, you digest it, then you're yes. able to have a sense of humor and kind of humanize your people. Yes, that that's a really good word, and uh, and and there's a saying that comedy equals tragedy plus time and willingness to to make it funny, mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, yeah, I guess you could say something similar for like black comedians, where obviously yes. always talking about black issues is yes. an ongoing thing for decades. Well, why? Because there's an ongoing race war in America. This hasn't all ended. the time. Yes. Yeah, never solved. Yeah. Hasn't been solved. Has not been so as long as there's a problem. And there's ills and there's pain. Mm -hmm. There's always comedy. So right. now you're saying that there's a more pain even for Asians and especially Chinese people yes. that now mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to talk about it and represent it even in, in their own light. So I guess... Um, yeah, it's interesting you brought up uh, black comedians. Uh, I think it's funny like. Uh, even 10, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of black comedians were making fun of the African accent mm. and like they're talking about they don't want to go back to Africa. Uh, but ever since like Black Panda hit, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like Wakanda forever, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I see there's more alignment from the black Americans and African immigrants, right? Yes. And especially African culture. I mean, I think 
Africa came up to, you know, with mm -hmm. Afro beats, there's like Afro, Burna Boy, yes. there's a lot more like African influenced music. And, yes. and I think there's more interdating, intermarriage with those groups. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, obviously at a time, Michael Blackson, who yeah. was raised in Philly, is the only one <laughs> doing African comedy, you know, yes. but now there's more African music. So I think that Af there's definitely an African wave, you know, just like I think definitely. that there is also an Asian wave and a Chinese wave in a different way. Yeah. But, but the Chinese wave <laughs> is coming with a whole bunch of other baggage with it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I think for like, speaking on ABCs and FOBs, like that whole relationship, as we know, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago when you first got here and I was growing up, we're not there friends. was a separation. We're not friends. No, no, not really. <laughs> not really. There wasn't really like, even with the Taiwanese fobs, like we were just like, no, these fobs are weird. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be accepted by America. Right. And now it's like, I think a lot more ABCs and fobs, they're more intermingling. Yes. And there's a lot more understanding between the two. And I think there's a lot more common ground. And I think that for me, for example, I look at a lot of Asian immigrants mm -hmm. and uh, Chinese immigrants on how they're handling it. And that's why we're talking about it right now. Because yeah. I still... Even though as an, I'm fully American, as an American I am, I still feel like I get seen as like a 0.25 immigrant. Gotcha. Like not a full immigrant, but I'm like a little immigrant. I'm limigrant. I'm a limited immigrant. <laughs> limigrant. I like limigrant. that term. Yeah. But, uh, you know, China, the economy is doing well. There's a, people see the, there's a big benefit of being fluent in both languages and, and cultural, like culturally. Right. Flu I mean, you make a lot of jokes on stage about... Yes. Chinese stuff like you are I, I and I guess this leads into kind of like our advice or or what advice would you have for a lot of like Chinese people who are dealing with these mixed feelings like they see more Chinese people on screen and that's cool but then they're like see reading all the news and then like China's the enemy and they're about to, they're just gonna go heads up and they're trying to uh, get rid of the USD as the reserve currency and all this stuff like all this evil stuff and competitive stuff that China is doing, like how do people, how can people deal with it, I guess? How do people cope with it? Um, I guess having a sense of humor, sense of humor is a great way to cope with the situation. Uh, you know, you can't really make people understand, like you can't really solve the geopolitical issues, but if you can make a joke about it, have a good conversation with Americans, um, a lot of times you'd be surprised how people will come around and, you know, like you said, the word, you know, humanize, it humanizes us. Right. Like, yes. I mean, I guess like, yeah, I guess having a sense of humor. I mean, I guess having these hard conversations too, yeah. like, I, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you know, if I look at what you do right. and you're born in Xinjiang of all places <laughs> in China, a very controversial place, right? Yeah. Like, you heard it in the news a while Went ago. Went to college in Wuhan. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Raised in Xinjiang, <laughs> went to college in Wuhan. Uh, Pung, I think there's a lot of material there right now. But all uh, the controversial places, yeah. guys. <laughs> You're like uh, a, a stew of the most like <laughs> negative stuff from China. Oh yeah. my gosh, you have a lot of work to do. Yeah, but I'm, what How's I'm saying <laughs> is that when you make a joke and you're you're used to doing crowds in Texas and Alabama mm -hmm. and in very American places, yeah, um, you are actually impacting their feelings about China. Personally, because you can't impact the geopolitics, but you can impact personally people who watch your show, yeah. who are listening to your jokes and giving you their attention, right? And yes. that's a really powerful thing. Yes. I, I think a, a person of my face, as soon as you go up on stage, uh, people judge you a little bit. It's like, they don't really trust you. Is, is this guy really funny? Like, I had to go out of my way to, like, prove myself. But as soon as you prove yourself, they have more trust for you. Mm. And at, at the end of the show, they, they understand, oh, this is just a yeah. regular human being. We, you know, we have Yo. a lot in common. You, I talk about Chinese issue, but I always like try to make it relatable to American people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, stand-up comedy is such yeah. an American thing. Yeah. You came here, you got an MBA and you're doing stand-up <laughs> comedy, not using your MBA whatsoever. What? No. Uh, <laughs> side note, before we end off this video, I actually heard that around New York City, there are fully Chinese student comedy shows now that are fully in China in Mandarin. Yeah, I've yeah. been there. I was oh, there. So? Yeah, I was there last Saturday. Are you doing comedy in Mandarin now? Can you I, do like full jokes? I mean, I'm sure you can. 
I, I, I suck at it. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> I went up there and just bomb. I just like try to translate my English jokes into Chinese. And <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, it work doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, but the delivery but yeah, is I guess, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody that was helpful to you guys and, and, Honestly, it's always good to talk to like immigrants who are trying to make it in America at one of the most American things, yes. by the way, one of the most American art forms. So everybody check out Pung stuff and the link down below. He is doing comedy out in New York City now. He's oftentimes at the Comedy Cellar. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having please me. hit that like button. Let us know what you think in the comments down below about this topic. And until next time, we out. <laughs>